Kool-Aid and I've always loved to bake and learn new recipes. So I thought, why not have you over and we can learn something new together. <laughs> Today is our last day together for a little while, so I invited my socially responsible pandemic pod over for a holiday treat. <laughs> And because today is a Kool-Aid holiday special, we're going to learn two recipes today. Cannabis infused hot chocolate and, you know what, I'll save the second re recipe for a little surprise for later. <laughs> if you visited our kitchen last week, you learned how to make the most incredible cannabis infused cinnamon rolls by Chef Micah Yarrow. <laughs> they were the perfect treat to host my bi-weekly book club with my bestie, Avi. <laughs> but enough about last week. We have a lot of work ahead of us today on Bambi Bakes. <laughs> today we'll return to Chef Keena Moffitt's Cannabis Creation Cookbook to make two new cannabis infused essentials. First, cannabis infused milk. <laughs> to make Chef Keena's can of milk, you'll need full fat milk. The recipe calls for one quart of milk, but we have a couple of extra guests coming over to celebrate responsibly. So let's use two quarters so everyone gets as much hot chocolate as they want. Thank you to Dispensary 33, Chicago's first dispensary, for providing the gorgeous flour we are infusing in our milk today. Since we're having hot chocolate first, I want my guests to relax without getting too sleepy, while feeling like they're lively selves. Plus, they don't know about the treat I'm making for them later either, and it can be our little secret. In addition to the milk, you'll need seven grams of ground decarboxylated cannabis, a double boiler pot, and cheesecloth. Once the milk has simmered for about an hour, remove the pot from heat <laughs> and strain with the cheesecloth. When you're finished, don't worry, your milk is supposed to have a yellow green color to it. I'm gonna set this in the fridge for now since we still need to make our cannabis infused coconut oil, but stay right there and we'll get right back to that can of oil in just a moment. Weed milk. We'll need a medium saucepan this time. Put three cups of coconut oil in the pan, olive oil if that's what you prefer. For this recipe, we will need about 14 grams of grounded decarboxylated cannabis and a cheesecloth for straining. Set that aside for now. Just like we did with the cannabis infused milk, you'll need to add cannabis a little bit at a time until the flour is fully coated. This time, we're going to simmer on low heat for about three hours, only stirring occasionally. Once your three hours are up, remove the pan from heat and strain the newly infused cannabis oil through a cheesecloth into the heat-proof container. We don't need to worry about storing this. Now that we have all our cannabis-infused ingredients, let's get started with today's special holiday treat. <laughs> One of my favorite treats growing up was Little Debbie Star Crunch. Whenever I'd open my lunchbox and feel the crinkle of that thin plastic covering, I knew I was about to unwrap something that would make those few minutes feel just like Christmas. That's why I'm letting you in on a simple way to make this delicious treat at home for your loved ones for the holidays. <laughs> Funny thing about today's recipes is that the baking portion of today's Bambi Bakes is already done. <laughs> That's right, this homemade Rice Krispie treat is a no-bake option. First, you'll want to line a large baking tray with parchment paper and set that aside. Pour about five or six cups of rice cereal into your mixing bowl and leave that for a moment. Over here, I have a pot where I've combined chocolate chips, peanut butter, maple syrup, and coconut oil. Heat on low until everything is melted and fully combined. Once the gooey mixture is ready to go, pour your liquid over your rice cereal and mix. Use a large spoon or a cookie scoop if you don't want to ruin your manicure <laughs> and drop each scoop on the line baking sheet. The only thing left to do is press them down and refrigerate. Woo! 
We've been making treats nonstop since you got here. <laughs> Let me put these in the fridge and then we can catch up on last week's discussion. There is no way my guests would be here this early. Would you mind hanging here for a sec? Hmm, strange. There was nobody at the door except these two cans of Mom Sucker Sincha from Mars Brewing. Paired with Mars Full Spectrum CBD Formula, these teas will have you breathing spring vibes, even in the frigid temperatures outside. But I wonder who these could be from. Hmm. I know who these are from. Did you get my delivery? I did. Thank you so much. That was so nice, Kelly. Everyone, meet my friend, Chef Kelly Ijichi, owner and chef at Mom's. So we just released this new CBD It's a CBD-infused sparkling green tea. Thank you so much for this sweet treat. This is exactly what I was looking for after a long day of baking, okay? Let me just... Can you open this? Thank you. Sorry, guys. Let me just get a sip of this first. Sure. Ooh, this is so good. Oh. Y'all get some of that, all right? Have you started your homemade hot chocolate yet? Uh, you're just in time. We just made the cannabis infused milk and we're gonna use it as the base for the Bambi baked hot chocolate. I remember having a mug of that at one of your dinner parties. It's so good. Oh, I'm so glad you remember. You know what, Kelly? Would you read off the rest of the ingredients while I put these away to chill? Of course, let me pull it up. All right, here it is. Bambi's Baked Hot Chocolate. For this, you will need one cup of granulated sugar, one cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, one cup of hot water, and a pinch of salt. And I've got the cannabis-infused milk right here. From here, you probably know what to do. But just in case, add your sugar, cocoa powder, and salt into a saucepan. Whisk until evenly mixed. Then pour hot water slowly and whisk until smooth. Last, you'll pour eight cups of milk into your saucepan and put the stove at a medium high until the cocoa is warm enough to your liking. Woo! All the treats are ready for my guests. And we finally have a second to chat. <laughs> Kelly, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm great. I'm looking good, feeling gorgeous. <laughs> What, you, what have you been working on? What's been going on? What's How does um, being a chef in quarantine work? So right now, I'm one half of the uh, team behind Moms. We're a Japanese comfort food concept. Uh, we currently operate out of Mars Brewing, located in Bridgeport. Oh, okay. Why? Um, we have, have done a lot of pivoting through quarantine, um, and it hasn't been easy, but I think that we have persevered pretty well. That's amazing. Could you let us know, uh, what was your training like? Like, how did you get started as a chef at Mom's? So I went to culinary school in Rhode Island and at Johnson & Wales University. Mm -hmm. I lived in New England for about seven years. I'm originally from Chicago. So amazing. I graduated and I uh, lived out there for a few years and I came back to Chicago and kind of jumped into the culinary scene here. Oh, cool. What, what started your journey with infusing, you know, cannabis into your cooking? So while we don't feature anything on our menu or really uh, cook with cannabis on a regular basis, we have done it for a few different events in the past. Uh, Mom's is known for uh, really unique pastries and desserts as well. And we found really uh, unique ways to incorporate cannabis into those desserts in the past. What kind of desserts do you guys have at Mom's? So, we do a uh, rotating menu of milk bread donuts mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. We do really interesting flavors. We, we use a lot of inspiration from Japanese cuisine. Um, we also have cream puffs uh, that we have infused in the past before, and we've had a really great result in uh, infusing cannabis into the pastry cream for a, like an eclair type pastry filled with like a purple and sweet yam custard that we have used. Can I, can I get one of those? Can you send me that at any point? Because I would love to try it. Um, I can make something happen for you. So we infuse a butter uh -huh. that gets folded into the pastry cream at the end of the cooking process. 
Mm. And then we also bake it into like a pie crust topping. We love butter here at Bambi Banks, as you can tell, okay? Oh, one more question. Do you have any memorable stories or anything fun that you can tell us about your cooking journey, you know, over the years? Um, so I will say about our, our journey as far as cooking with cannabis, that menu item in particular, the cannabis infused cream puff, we had the opportunity to serve to a pretty well-known Chicago food writer, and it laid him out. He, he slept really good that night. Amazing. <laughs> I too would like to be laid out. <laughs> well, Kelly, thank you so much. I'm so happy for having you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Could you let the people know where they can find you and how they could get your uh, amazing teas? So Moms is operating currently at Mars Community Brewing on Bridgeport at 3630 South Iron Street. Our hours of operation for food are Friday through Saturday. The tap room is open throughout the week and you can do curbside pickup, you can pre-order online. We also deliver all of the Mars beverages, CBD beverages, CBD infused coffee, beers, along with the Mom's food menu throughout the week. So everyone, make sure you go check out Mom's, make sure you get it delivered and you're being safe, and make sure you go check out my friend Chef Kelly. Bye Kelly, thank you so much for tuning in. Here on Bambi Bakes, we have the privilege to partake. But there are many places where the possession of cannabis is illegal. Even places in the United States where possession of cannabis is decriminalized, discriminatory arrest rates remain high. We don't always have the answers, but we do know how to make something a lot more palatable, and that's with quick and direct action. So that's why 10% of all donations of Bambi Bakes pilot episode and monetization income will go directly to the first defense legal aid here in Chicago. This is also the last of our three Bambi Bakes pilot episodes, and we want to see you in the next year. So please remember to click subscribe and don't skip those commercials. If you watch, that means our kitchen and everyone associated benefits directly. To learn more about Bambi Bakes, Moving Standard, or any of our partners and sponsor organizations, just lift your phone, open your camera, and aim it at the code on the screen. <laughs> but you can bookmark that for later. It sounds like our guests are arriving. Great. And then pull your hair back a little bit. On that side. Keep serving that the whole time and that's going to be your solo. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I feel like you know. <laughs> welcome to my living room. And help me welcome my special guests, Kinsey Kule and Chloe Kule, my sisters! Hi. Hi. Thank y'all so much for coming on my last pilot episode of Bambi Bakes of for the Kool-Aid Holiday Special. Iconic. Yes, thank y'all so much. Okay, so I want to play a little game before we like start the whole like shablam because I want the audience to really know us because you know they like to speculate about which one of us is the biggest piehead, which one of us is not. So let's just like let's just let's just play a little game okay. and see what see what we think is true. So I'm gonna ask a couple questions, and you point to the sister that you think is that. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and if you feel like you are that girl, then you raise your hand, okay? Okay, all right. So, okay. who out of the Kool-Aid sisters is the biggest piehead? Okay. One, two, three. Period. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mother of steel. Okay. <laughs> Who out of the Kool-Aid sisters taps out first? One, two, three. Is it me? <laughs> How many times that was? Okay, sure. It's I don't really tap out. I'll say so. <laughs> like only once, but okay. It's okay. Okay, okay. Who out of the Kool-Aid sisters spends the most on cannabis? One, two, three. <sighs> I cannot lie. I am a connoisseur. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> I mean, she got the bales. You know what I'm saying? I'm the so, let's just like answer some questions for our audience to who you know don't really consume weed, but like want to get into it. You know, they're feeling it. You know what I'm saying? So, for our novice viewers out there, what are some tips for the people who are just now starting to get into the the cannabis? I think my advice. Um, I would say Google. You know? Google? Google what? Yeah. 
Google what you want to know about it. If you, I mean, if you don't know about it, I mean, I would probably Google it unless I have a weed friend. You know, then I hit up the weed friends. You know. Oh, cool, cool. Well, that was great advice, Chloe. Thank so you so much. So smoke with your friends. Smoke with your friends, everybody. <laughs> your friends smoke, you out. smoke responsibly. No smoking and driving. None of that here. Okay. I have the cutest little treat for us today. Are y'all ready? Yeah, absolutely. I'm hungry. Jacob, can we bring out the snacks? No. All right, that's a wrap, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to try our homemade star crunches? Oh, yes. thank you. Yes, delicious. for the holiday season. Mm, just got one. No, they are cannabis infused, oh. so you know, be careful, ladies. There you go. I think, I know that I have in the car with you guys been like, you know. Hot boxing? Not hot boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I heard car and hot. But I've been under the influence when we've been stopped, like in the car, obviously as a passenger, come on. And it's like, you know, made me very nervous. Has that ever happened to either of you? Have you ran into like a, a police officer or anything like under the influence? And what is, what's that like for you? Well, for myself, I haven't uh, personally gotten pulled over by an officer while under the influence, but you know, we see them out in public everywhere we go. Yeah. And that is always kind of a nerve-wracking situation when you're just relaxing, mm -hmm. walking down the street. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just try to act natural. <laughs> and it, as I do in all situations where I'm really baked and <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> so. well, what about you, Chloe? I, I haven't been, I mean, as a driver, I haven't been under the influence. Um, that's, let's make that clear. It's not a real housewife of Potomac. Um, but other than that, I, no, I wouldn't. And if I have, I mean, I don't give. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I just live life. I can be happy. I can, you don't know what I am. Okay, you don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. You're not wrong. Natural <laughs> state. Very. You know. Kenzie, do y'all like these? Are these really oh, good? They're Sorry. delicious. I'm just waiting for the cue. They remind um, me of my lunchbox as a kid. You know, the one that I packed myself because. <laughs> so, if for our viewers who don't know, Kinsey does cook. Y'all need to follow her on Instagram to see all the great recipes that she does. Do you have any, like, uh, cannabis-infused treats that you would make for, say, like, I don't know, a first date? Well, this is something that I've kind of been thinking about because you, you have to consider um, space because you're going somewhere mm -hmm. you're packing it. And you want to be creative and intriguing. So I was thinking maybe like some green curry. You can, you know, get it green curry. Mm -hmm. I see what you did there. <laughs> yes. Fish, fish, fish. Or maybe some egg rolls. Ooh. Um, mango and sticky rice because um, mango helps you absorb THC better. How would you infuse <laughs> your, um, your cannabis into those treats? Do you know? Yeah, so I think the easiest way to infuse your dishes is through an ingredient that's going to be used in all of them. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking maybe coconut milk. You can drizzle that in all of those items. I love that. Chloe, did you eat your whole tree? I was hungry. I told you. I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I was hungry. I ate all day. For those who don't know, Chloe is reckless with the edibles. <laughs> Very. Chloe, can you tell us a like cute little funny story of you on edibles? Because I feel like you always are like having the time of your life when I see you. Oh on well. Edible. Um, I would say, I was, can I get a nap, by the way? Can I get a um, <laughs> it was that time that our friend brought over those blueberry muffins, and oh, girl, it was absolutely beautiful. So, like, I had one, you know, the blueberry muffin, not knowing how strong it was, mm -hmm. and literally, it was the middle of the day. It was like six o'clock, and thank you so much. It was six o'clock. Uh, the chocolate just melts in your mouth. That was mm. so good. Mm. That was delicious. Mm. Mm. Anyway, Chloe, what were you saying? Oh yeah, so I had one of these edibles and I know how strong it was. And like, I tasted the weed, but I was like, how strong is this? Is it gonna knock me out? But it was so good that I didn't care. So I ate like literally almost two pieces. I think it might have been two, honestly. Mm -hmm. And from six, didn't wake up till like 3 a.m. and it just went back to sleep. So technically I was asleep half the whole time. 
Mm-hmm. Did you have any idea how strong they were? No, that's why I just ate it. I was like, I don't taste <laughs> nothing. It's just like, because you, you taste it in the edible, mm-hmm. but like this one, I didn't taste it. So I was like, okay, well, why not? Well, that's okay. a lesson to our viewers. Make sure you know how much intake you're having with these edibles. Exactly. You know, just like on the first episode, we said that you have to be mindful of how much you serve your guests. Ladies, I want to thank you so much for coming to this. This was so cute. Okay. Um, yeah. what, what? I thought it was something else. We can keep going if you want to. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Girl, we yeah, gonna talk about. Let's, talk, let's get to the real tea. Okay, let's get to the real yeah, tea. Yeah, get to the real tea. Let's get to the real Let's tea. get to the sweater. Best. We need. That's something we need to address here. What do we need yeah. to address here? Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, she got me. Girl, I was like, what, I know, I was like, what happened? <laughs> As you guys know, Chicago is third in the United States for a top discriminatory arrest of marijuana. Um, I just want to know, like, what do you guys think about that? Like, do you think that it that people should still be serving these terms after the legalization happened in Illinois? I mean, in all of Il- yeah, in all of Illinois. Like, why are people still in jail? What do you, what are your solutions for that? I think it's really wrong that we're not exonerating these people putting money into rebuilding their lives, helping them like, you know, gain leverage in perhaps the industry that they once, you know, had knowledge in prior to conviction. And it's really crazy to me because after these people are, you know, put in prison and they get out, they're they're not allowed certain like rights because of their like felony charges. Like they have a hard time getting housing. They have a hard time like getting a job. And It makes no sense to me that, like, someone who is bright, who just ended up on, you know, in the wrong place at the wrong time on a certain day, ends up, like, wasting their potential because of, like, a mistake they made in the past. That's really crazy to me. Yeah. I agree with both of you. Like, y'all took the words right out of my mouth, so I agree. I think we should locally take, I think people could locally take um, their concerns to their aldermen or um, whatever local representative they have mm-hmm. and just voice their opinion about how they think cannabis is affecting you know, the people around them and our environment because it's affecting everyone. You know what else I think that specifically dispensaries could do, like in Illinois, find those people who do have those drug charges and try to you know, give back and give to the community and give those people like jobs so that they can get back to whatever they were doing before they were charged. You know what I'm saying? Because there are people who literally are out there who literally went to jail for like a, a dime bag. Mm-hmm. And that's wild, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, thank y'all so much for coming to the Kool-Aid Holiday Special. I appreciate you so much for coming out, sisters. sisters. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, please like and subscribe. And I won't be seeing you next week, but you know, if you like and subscribe, maybe you'll see me next month. Bye.